In this video, we're going to take a look at the static keyword in the Java programming language. We use the static keyword when we want to invoke a method or create some kind of attribute that is not object specific. In other words, it's only specific to a class. And if we change it for one class, we essentially change it for all objects under that class. We've been using statics all along, and you might not even know it. Now, I currently have a program where I'm creating two different vehicles. I'm creating your vehicle and my vehicle. So these two different vehicles, if we take a look at my last run, we'll see that uh, my vehicle has its own state or value of its attributes, and your vehicle has its own state or value of its attributes. And changing the state of your vehicle does not change the state of my vehicle. Now that's what we commonly call a non-static operation something that is object specific, not class specific. So when we think about static, we want to think about something that will affect all vehicles at once. And a good example I can think is the eCheck program, which if you lived in Ohio back in the uh, 90s, you might remember this. This was a vehicle emissions testing program that applied to uh, four counties in Ohio. Uh, and it was a very politically charged thing because it only apl applied to certain counties. So if you lived in Hamilton County, you had to get e-checked. Butler County had to get e-checked. But Warren County, no, no e-check. So there was a lot of political pressure to get rid of this e-check program. The, the other thing is it applied even to newer vehicles. I think your first year or two, you, got a, you didn't have to go. But after that, you had to have your vehicle checked for emissions. And many new vehicles didn't have uh, emissions issues. So... Anyway, like a lot of things, just wasn't very popular, uh, and a lot of people ran with, I'm going to get rid of eCheck, and then one time, they did get rid of eCheck, and we no longer had to uh, have it done anymore. So that's something that was universal for, for all cars in Hamilton County. As soon as the governor said, no more eCheck, no car in Hamilton County needed to get eCheck. But the day before, uh, you had to get eCheck as a condition for renewing your, uh, renewing your license plate. So let's make a new attribute on our vehicle, and we're going to call this attribute eCheck uh, e -check required or something like that. So I'm going to say private, now watch carefully, static, uh, boolean, and we'll say eCheck required, okay? And now I'm going to uh, Alt-Enter, or let's see, we'll do, um, uh, we'll do right-click. And we'll say refactor, and let's, whoops, refactor, and encapsulate fields, that's fine. And notice a subtle difference here. This is a Boolean. So instead of a getter and a setter, the getter is actually, it starts with the word is. So is each check required, set each check required. I'm going to refactor, and there we go. And now as part of my toString method, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to add one more parameter that says eCheck required, and then we'll say plus eCheck required. And I don't mean to give eCheck a bad name. It, it definitely did a lot of good things, but I remember, uh, personally, I remember it came about right when I became driving age, So, uh, and I always lived in an eCheck required county, so I remember all the drama that was around it. And then when they got rid of eCheck, they balanced it out by finding other ways to, uh, other ways to uh, uh, be more environmentally friendly. So nonetheless, okay, it put these getters and setters in a kind of funny place here. Uh, notice that it's an is and a set, but also notice as I move this down to where our other getters and setters are, uh, as I move this down, notice that it also has this keyword static which means that I don't apply it to, to one object, I apply to all objects of this class. Now we'll go ahead and start off eCheck required. Uh, we'll initialize it to false. We can either do that here, or that's a really good thing to do in a constructor too. So we could uh, initialize it. Now let's make it true. Let's start it off as true. Okay, and eCheck required true. Okay. We'll start it off just like so. I'm going to save, and I'm going to quickly run the program so that we can see uh, eCheck required for both of our vehicles. Okay, 
So you see that we have our new two string here. We have our new output that says e check required true for both of our vehicles. Now let's make a change. Let's go back to driver and I'm going to make one little change here. I'm going to move the constructor of your vehicle up a little bit uh, purely because that is setting the value of e check required and I don't want that to get in the way and get confusing. So after your vehicle's constructor, but before I do any system out print lines, I'm going to say vehicle dot set e check required, and let's change that to false. Let's say the governor said, okay, no more e check required, we're going to make it false. So I save, and uh, I'm going to run the program one more time, and let's take a look at the output. Remember last time it said true for each vehicle. Now let's see what happens. Now it says false all across the board. Now look very carefully. I'm calling a method, but what am I calling the method on? I'm calling the method on the class called vehicle. Not on my vehicle, not on your vehicle, but on the class called vehicle. Because this is essentially a class level variable, changing it once changes it universally. Set a check required to be false. Okay, now let's, let's try something else out, which is gonna be really interesting. What if I move this? down to here. In other words, what if I move it after my vehicle prints, but before your vehicle prints, and before my vehicle prints the final time? Watch what happens, it's gonna be very interesting. Okay, so I save, and I'm gonna run it quickly one more time, 10, 10, 10,000 on the odometer, and 100 to travel. Okay, so it was true which we would expect because we know that in the vehicle class, we default it to true. Then, it, then, then we say, okay, e check required false. And then the next lines that print, your vehicle, see your vehicle, your vehicle after move, your vehicle after move, all of a sudden it's false. No big surprise there, but look at this last line. The last line is simply my vehicle after move, which is a copy paste of this line right here. In other words, we would anticipate that this line and this line would be identical. They are, except that last value changes from true to false because a static is going to affect all objects. Okay, one other thing that we can do, I'll go ahead and move that static back uh, just because it's gonna get confusing if I don't. One other thing is that notice that I can invoke a static method on a class. I can also invoke a static method on an object and we'll get the exact same result. So let's say your vehicle dot set e check required. And remember now I've moved that to before any of our prints happen. So I can use an object reference and call the static, but it is going to uh, it is going to affect all objects, not just your vehicle. And that's why you might be able to see a subtle yellow line here, which is a warning, which is saying, wait a minute, why are you calling a static, but you're referencing an object? So let me play this again and just show you that it is indeed going to affect both your vehicle and my vehicle. As a matter of fact, I could put down my vehicle, we'll get the same results. Okay, and play and very quickly again, 10, 10, 100,000, 100. Doesn't matter what I set it on, uh, it's going to be false all the way across the board. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and change it back to vehicle. Now, one caution about a static method. A static method cannot access any non-static attributes because a static method applies to all objects of the class where an attribute, which is non-static, applies to each object separately. So if I try to, uh, in a static method, if I try to change something like odometer, let's make it uh, 50,000, I can't do that. And what we'll see is non-static variable odometer cannot be referenced from a static context. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I know I'm going to need that in a second. Okay, so how do we solve that? Well, one way to solve it, honestly, it's a problem. It's not something we're, we just fix automatically. We have to ask ourselves, does this method really need to be static? If it does, we should not be accessing a variable 
that does not have the static uh, does not have the static keyword in it. Uh, or we can say, okay, it does need to be static, but does this variable need to be non-static? In other words, if I were to make the odometer static, then that error message would go away. But uh, you proceed with extreme caution here because by setting the odometer static, that means that everybody's car has the same odometer value. That's not something that we want. That essentially is the difference between static and non-static. Do we want one value for everybody's car or do we want everybody's car to have a unique value? Okay, so uh, we'll go back to where we were and everything's still the same. I'll just very quickly run it one more time. Just make sure I haven't messed anything up. But let me ask you, have you used a static method before? And think about this, have you used a static method before? In other words, have you ever called a method without uh, having to create an object first? And honestly, you have three or four times and you might not have known it. Take a look at this line 53 right here, where we're taking a string and we're converting it to an integer with integer.parseInt. The parseInt method is a static method because we're calling it on this class integer. We don't have to create an object of integer first. Okay, what's another one? J option pane show input dialog. Did we have to make an object out of J option pane first? No, we didn't. So that's another case of a static method. And one more, our own prompt user we're in right now. Did we ever have to make an object out of driver? And the answer is no, we didn't. Uh, so this main method is just kind of a special blessed method that gets called when our program starts. Uh, and that by default is static because when a program started, there are no objects. You have to create an object. You know, you create objects once your program is running. But before it's running, there are no objects. Now, uh, prompt user is also static because a static method can only call another static method. In other words, if I take this away, you see prompt user now red lines and it says non-static method prompt user cannot be referenced from a static context. That's simply telling us if you're in a static method, your only option is to call another method that is also static, number one, or number two, create an object as we've done on line number 28 and then call methods specific to that object. So that, that's an important uh, consideration. Uh, a static method can only call another non, uh, can only call another static method unless it is calling a method in reference to an object. In that case, it can call it static or non-static, doesn't matter. Um, I know that's a little bit confusing, but uh, you know, we can we can kind of take a look at what's going on here and, and get a good idea of that. So um, Static method, static, calling a static method. Static method, calling a non-static method in reference to an object. Static method, calling a static method in reference to a class, if that method is in a different class. A little confusing. Hopefully I didn't talk too much around that. But nonetheless, uh, that is a quick look at statics and non-statics in Java. I hope this has been helpful. We'll see you in the next video.